Well, good morning. Today is exciting. Today is the first day uh, that we are live streaming, as we said. So let's give our live stream family a good round of a hand, round of applause. We're so glad that you're here, that you're joining us. Uh, if you're watching online, I'm kind of jealous because you could be eating a cinnamon roll right now as I'm preaching, but you're not because you're fasting, right? You know, you know? Somebody just put their cinnamon roll down. They were like, mm. that's right, Pastor Josh. It's the beginning of the year. That's good. And like so many people, I have started working out again. <laughs> again. Like many of you who started working out, don't lie. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Come awake in your peace. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, like many of Americans, I have started working out. Uh, I have not joined a gym, though. All right, I'm going to see if my way works first, then I'll see about the gym. So I went, looked all over Craigslist and whatnot. I bought a punching bag, got a kickboxing app. All right, I've been going strong for five days. Thank you, I appreciate that. I was hoping for a little bit more applause than that just to keep me going. Throw some things in the comments. Great job, Pastor Josh. Only 360 more days to go. You're doing great. Um, so so here, here's why kickboxing. It feels less like working out if I feel like I'm training to defend my family when traversing dark alleys, okay? Um, it, it's a thing our family does just for fun. We go, we find dark alleys, we walk through them uh, just to see what happens. And when you do that, you meet some people, they're kind of sus, they're kind of, uh, they're kind of sketchy. And so I just want to be ready. And I feel like if that's what I'm doing when I'm working out, I'm not really working out. I'm preparing. Anybody else? It, it, okay. Now, I think I'm doing this the right way. I fast and work out, right? Right? Because less eating, more working out should equal more athletic bodiness. Okay? I'm just guessing. Like I said, I'm not going to a gym. I'm playing it by ear. Don, you're like, that's not going to work, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's a trainer. He's like, that's, that's not what you're going for. And so, um, so I think I got this figured out. We'll see. I'll tell you in a couple months. And, and the hardest thing about working out, I promise you this, is not working out. You would think that's the part. It's not the part that I don't like. The hardest part about working out is getting out of bed. At 5 o'clock in the morning, when it's dark, and it's cold, and the alarm goes off, and I hit the snooze so I can get up at 5.15, and I wake up, and I get out of my bed, and it's comfortable, and it's warm, and it's not working out, and I say, do I have to? Friday, Friday was bad. I was kind of pouty on Friday. Not like where you actually cry, but where you want to cry. Anybody ever had that? And it's like, it's, <laughs> but do I have to? And it was like, I was like kind of like slowly moving. It was like one leg out of bed. And then, and then this question popped in my head. Joshua, what do you want? Do you want to keep telling your wife that you need to work out? Over and over and over and over and over and o I'm not exaggerating. She's like, she's like, yes. Uh, she, she's looking at me and she's so nice. I'm like, babe, I need to work out. She's like, okay, babe. I need to work out. Okay. Just, she's like, whenever you're ready to start doing it, buddy, you just go ahead and do it. You keep telling me over and over what you need to do. I'm not going to make you work out. So you go ahead. She's like, oh, okay, babe. Well, go for it. And I'm like, if I say it enough times, eventually I'll, I'll do it. That's, my, that's my, my guess. But hey, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And so, and so, and I ask myself, do you want to keep telling your wife over and over? Do you want to keep asking yourself why you need an oxygen tank when you chase your kids around the house three times? It was only three. My son's like, Dad, chase me. And I'm like, oh, buddy. <laughs> can we just, like, fight right here on the floor? Can we just, <laughs> can we just keep it stationary? Do I want the results of working out, or do I just want the dream of the results of working out? What 
do I want? And whatever it is that I choose to want, I'm going to have to pick that thing. And I might have to wake up. And I believe that right now the church is in a place, not just Horizon, but the church as a whole is in a place where God is shaking us. And he's saying, it's time to wake up. (laughs) Time to wake up. And we're going, but God, it's it's dark outside. He goes, I know, but but you're the light of the world. (laughs) It's time to wake up. It's time to, but God, it's like like gloomy out there. And it's, it's hard when I get up. And he goes, I know, but you're my ambassador to the world. You're the ones that I've chosen to represent me. It's, it's time to wake up. And for so many of us, we just keep reaching over and hitting snooze. Hitting snooze. And this is why this season of fasting is so important. Because fasting is it's that moment of getting out of bed. Fasting is the discomfort that we put upon ourselves so that we can have a bigger prize. Fasting is when we say no to us and yes to God because we want more of him. We are seeking more of him. We want clarity. We need to hear his voice. Fasting will take us out of ourselves and into who he is. Fasting gives us the ability to know what God is saying and what his call on our life is. Fasting pulls back the the, the curtain of mystery of God's will and tells us what his desire is. Fasting is the way to break through in our spiritual lives. We all know we need breakthrough in society. But I will say this, we will not have breakthrough in society until we have breakthrough in our spirit. Fasting is not just some archaic way of of tormenting ourselves. Fasting is not a way for us to lose weight. That's not what I'm doing, guys. That's not what I'm doing. I'm working out too. Fasting... Is not a way to twist God's arm so that you get what you want. Fasting is God's way of disconnecting us from earth and reconnecting us with heaven. Fasting is the way that we shut ourselves down so that we could be more closely connected with God because it is the answer to the question, what do you want? Do I want comfort or do I want character? Do I want food or do I want faith? It's the the answer to the question, who will I serve? Will I serve King Jesus or King Stomach? This is what fasting does for us. I want you to see some of the the benefits of fasting real quick. In Luke chapter 4, we see Jesus has this moment of fasting. In verse 1, it says, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. And Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. I believe that the Bible oftentimes has many understatements, but none as much as this. Jesus did not eat for 40 days, and all it has to say was, and he was very hungry. No, very hungry is how I feel after church, okay? After 40 days of fasting, I am starving. I am famished. I am ravenous, okay? Luke, let's use some adjectives, shall we? It says Jesus was very hungry, so he fasted for 40 days. And then it says this. Then Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Holy Spirit's power. It was not until he fasted and came back with the Holy Spirit's power that Jesus began to heal, that he began to do miracles, that his ministry actually started. It wasn't until a time of fasting and prayer and struggle that Jesus actually stepped into all that the Father had called him to do here on earth. And many of us will live powerless lives because we are too afraid to say no to self. Well, I don't want to fast. Guess what? Nobody wants to fast. I don't even think Jesus wanted to fast. Jesus came back and he said, listen, we're going to a party. Where's that wedding at? Let me show you another one. Ezra chapter 8. This is what else fasting does. 
It says, and there by the Ahava Canal, I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves before our God. We prayed that we would give us, we prayed that he would give us a safe journey and protect us, our children, and our goods as we traveled. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayer. Fasting brought God's protection on their natural earthly things also. Many of us are, are having struggles in our finances or struggles in our health or struggles. In, you're just like, man, why does stuff just seem to keep breaking? And so I just keep getting bills. And I just get this stuff just doesn't, things aren't working out. And I get a raise, but then it seems like the money's gone. And I just, God, what is going on? God, my kids are acting up. They're being crazy. God, I want them to come to you. But what should I do? How do I get them? And God's saying, fast. Fast. Fast for your marriage. Fast for your family. Fast for, for, for your stuff. And God heard them. About eight years ago, I'm assuming my wife is better at chronologically things than I am. I'm actually horrible at it. She's like, remember this? I was like, wasn't that like five years ago? She's like, Josh, that was two months ago. I was like, ah. Sorry, babe. About eight years ago, I'm assuming my, my oldest daughter had been born and we were in financial duress okay we were in financial duress we needed a miracle and so I started a time of extended fasting and prayer and towards the end of this time um, we were getting bills and bills and and bills and wondering hey babe uh, how are we gonna pay these I don't know if any of y'all ever been in that place where you're looking at the bills you're like hey how are we gonna pay this and you kind of laugh a little bit, like, <laughs> I didn't have it last month either. You know, it's like, I don't know what you want me to do now. If I didn't give it to you last month, I ain't got it this month. And you're sitting there, and we were wondering, how are we going to pay these bills? And we got a letter from the doctor that, that, that had uh, delivered the baby, uh, our, our oldest, Ariella. And um, I was like, great, it's a bill. <laughs> and I did that kind of chuckle because I was like, well, Jesus, Either you can pay it or nobody can. <laughs> and I opened it, and there was a check. I said, excuse me? And I put out $2,400, and it said, your whole thing has been paid. We owe you money. I said, what? <laughs> what? Hold up. I'm not getting excited yet. I called him up. I said, excuse me. Um, I don't know if you know this, but you guys sent me a check instead of a bill. And they said, oh, yes, sir, that's click hallelujah. <laughs> Praise him. I don't know. All of a sudden, out of this fast, I was like, God just, just came through. God just did something that was beyond anything that I know. Listen, if one of y'all paid for it, don't tell me. I'm just assuming he put it in their account, changed their computer system. I don't know. That's all I know is that a miracle happened. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Jesus said, says this. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Self-denial is a part of the Christian life. We live in a world that says, what makes you happy? Do what makes you happy. Listen, if it doesn't make you happy, you need to stop. If they don't make you happy, you need to leave. If this doesn't make you happy, no. That is not what God says at all. He says, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Fasting is a part of self-denial where we say no to ourselves for the greater thing of having Jesus. Where we say, God, I want to know you more. I want to hear you more. I want to trust you more. I want to have greater faith. I want to have a, a greater ability to, to hear your voice. I want to feel your presence, God. Let me tell you this. This earth is not our home. And if you live for this earth, you will be very disappointed. But when we start saying, I'm setting myself up for eternity. I am setting myself up for the greater thing. And when we bring eternity into the temporary, it exceeds what we are going through right now. When we bring God's presence into our problems, it will exceed what we are going through right now. Fasting does this. 
I've been fasting for a few years now as a, just a regular part of my life, not just like right now. I fast on a weekly basis. And um, I want you to tell you, I want to tell you something. Not one of those times have I ever wanted to do it. Not one of those times was I ever like, <laughs> it's fasting day, y'all. I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> Somebody be like, hey, we're going to lunch. You want to come? I'm like, get gone. Just go. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, hey, God, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I fasted last week. So I think we should do an every other week thing. God, I don't know if you know this, but I'm hungry. I've conveniently forgotten that I was fasting before. I won't lie. But I fasted as a regular part of my life. And from that, I believe that one of the greatest benefits that I have gained is the ability to stay. The ability to be stable. The ability when hard times come that I'm not swayed, when, when it feels like things aren't going to work out. For some reason, I can't, it's not me. There's just something inside of me that just goes, you're staying. You're not moving. God's not done. You're going to trust anyway. There's something on the inside of me that's not me that has been established. And I believe it has been through a consistent life of fasting. Because fasting is like mortar on the bricks that keeps them stable. And it gives you a firm foundation. I believe that there's another reason why we need to be fasting right now. Let's look at Jonah chapter 3. Y'all wouldn't expect me to go to Jonah today, would you? <laughs> if, you don't, if you need some backstory, Jonah was a prophet. And uh, God says to him, I want you to go to the city of Nineveh. They're horrible, wicked, despicable, disgusting people who have just, they, they did absolutely horrible things. I'm not going to tell you because you're fasting. I don't know what that has to do with anything. <laughs> and, so, and so God says, I want you to go there and I want you to tell them that I'm going to destroy their city. And Jonah says, no, nah, I'm not going to do that because if I tell them they're going to destroy their city and they repent, you're merciful and you'll forgive them. So I'm going to stay and do my own thing. And God goes, okay. So Jonah gets on a boat. He tries to leave. God's like, you're not going nowhere. And they, he gets eaten by a fish. Long story short, he's like, I'd rather a fish be in me than me be in a fish. And he's like, God, I'm sorry. Fish spits him out. And he goes to Nineveh. So he's walking through Nineveh, and here's what he says, verse 4. On the day Jonah entered the city, he shouted to the crowds, 40 days from now Nineveh will be destroyed. The people of Nineveh believed God's message, and from the greatest to the least, they declared a fast and put on burlap to show their sorrow. And God shows mercy on them, and they're forgiven. Fasting is a declaration of repentance. And fasting increases our need to repent. It, it does something on the inside of us that begins to say, hey, there's some stuff in your life that is not in complete alignment with God, and it is time for you to repent. What is repentance? Repentance is the changing of your mind from your way to God's way. Okay? Repentance is when we go, God, I'm going to live life my way. If I need help, I'll come talk to you. Don't worry. I got you. You're right back there. You're sitting in the back seat. If I need you, I'll turn to you. You can take the wheel for a minute, but I got it for the most part, okay? God, I'm doing my thing. I'll have relationships that want to have relationships. I will, I will live my life the way I want to live my life. I will choose my moral compass of right and wrong over yours. And repentance is this moment where we go, this is wrong. I'm wrong. And whether we like it or not, we turn and we say, God, you're king. You're the one that's in control. You're the one that establishes what is right and wrong. This word is what I will use to establish right and wrong. Whether I agree with it in the moment or not, I'm going to submit to it. So, God, I'm sorry for doing it my way. I'm doing it your way now. That 
is repentance. And repentance is necessary for revival. Absolutely necessary. We cannot have revival without repentance. And here's why. It's because God cannot send his fire on an unholy sacrifice. If the people of God aren't walking in holiness, and what is holiness? Holiness isn't a following of rules. Holiness is a submission to God that whatever you say, that's what I do. How you act is how I want to act. The way you live is the way I want to live. Holiness is not going, okay, what's all the rules? I'll do all those. Holiness is saying, God, I'm submitted to you, and I want to live a life untainted from the world. So show me how to do that. And whatever you say, that's what I'll do. And when the church does that, then God's fire of revival can fall. I believe that when we think of revival, at least I I often think of revival in terms of seeing a lot of people come to Jesus and get saved. But that's not revival. Because to revive something means that it was alive, died, and came back to life. When people in the world get saved, they was dead and they came back to life. That's called born again. Revival happens in the church and spills out to the world. Revival is when the people of God who were alive through regeneration and being born again, they go into sleep, they they get comfortable, they want to stay in that bed of comfortability, of compromise. God, I want to stay right here. I like it here. And they get shaken awake by the Spirit of God. And they awaken and they go, oh my goodness, I am unholy. God, I repent. Forgive me. And they come awake and revival comes. This is revival. In 1830, there was a revivalist by the name of Charles Finney. And and Charles Finney moved to Rochester, New York, to take a, a position as a pastor. And while he was there, when he first got there, he and a friend got a room. And they locked themselves in the room for an extended time to pray and to fast. To pray and to fast. And from that room, Charles Finney began to go and he would preach. And he would preach a message of repentance. He actually had something that was kind of interesting. They were called the anxious chairs. Nothing to do with anxiety. He would have the whole front row open and he would say this after preaching. If you feel anxious for your soul, if you are getting this feeling on the inside that I am not right with God and I need to do something, I need to repent, and you have that feeling, I want you to come up to the front. And they would come up to the front and his people would come and begin to minister to them and they would get saved. Because people started to understand that they had a need for repentance. God is awakening the church. Because the world needs the church. Because the Bible calls the bride, the the church, the bride of Christ. And he's coming for a bride that it says is unblemished and unspotted from the world. It is bright. It is shiny. It is holy. It is like him. And that's what he's coming for. And so we have this moment. We have this opportunity right now to join with with this fasting, to join with this self-denial. Say, God, I choose you. I want to invite you all to stand. If you're at home, I want to invite you to stand in your living room. If you're not in a place where you can stand, just lift your hands. If you can't do that where you are, just get your heart ready to submit to King Jesus. where you feel the Holy Spirit poking at that thing that you don't want to show him 
It's like a kid, and they took some candy, and they have it behind their back, and you're like, what's that? And I'm like, what's what? What's, I don't, I don't have, and we do that with God. We, we, okay, God, you can have all of this, but I really like this. So I'll just, I'll. But God's ready. We're in a moment of fasting, of, of self-denial. Let's give in to King Jesus. Let's give in to King Jesus. And so I want to encourage you right now, if there's something that God is convicting you of, something God is showing you, that right now, just you and God, you begin to say, okay, God, you can have it. I repent. Let me tell you something. You don't have to understand why the Bible teaches something to submit to what the Bible teaches. There are things this world tells us that directly contradict what God says in his word. And we go, but that seems like it makes a lot of sense. But the creator of the universe says, believe me, it doesn't. We're submitting. So go ahead, just in this moment, submit. In this moment. They're going to sing over. I, if, I don't want even to feel the need to sing along. I want you to feel the need to say, God, whatever you want, that's what I'll do. Whatever you're saying, that's what I'll do. Because I have to have a personal revival in order for this world to have revival. I have to get right with God so they can get right with God. I have to get right with God so my kids can get right with God. So they have an example of godliness that will help them know what it looks like to say yes to Jesus 100%. And they follow me as I follow Christ. Come on. Begin to say, God, whatever you want. I say yes. We give it all to you, Jesus. We give you all that we are, God. We submit to you, King Jesus. To your rule, to your reign. We surrender to you, God.
Forgive me. Jesus, I give you my whole life. I give you everything. I want the prayer team to come up. Prayer team, come up. And if you want to come and get prayer, if you want somebody to pray over you, come up to the front right now. Come up to the front. Let God minister. Let God change you. Let Him wreck your life and bring it into something that you've never seen before. Come awake in this city. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awake in the people. Come awake in the city. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Church, God is on the move. We are ending the service. If you need prayer, come up and get prayed for by somebody. Come up and let God stir up that fire. If you need to repent, God says confess your sins one to another. These people are trained. They, they, are, they are safe. And they want to pray over you. So as we end, I invite you to come up. If you're watching online, if you have a prayer request, go ahead and just type it in or message somebody that's, that's in the chat. And just say, hey, can you pray for me? We want to see God move in your life, right in your home, right in your car, wherever you are. God is ready to bring revival when we're ready to repent. Be encouraged, church. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen.